Hey friends, welcome back to another video or a new video, probably the first one you've seen in a while. I'm not sure which order this is going up in, but I do have a vlog coming. We might have already seen it or I explain where I've been. But I still wanted to make my April radar video, even though it's the end of April, because there's so many books I'm excited to read, some that I've already read that I want to tell you about. And just April is a good month for publishing, especially debuts. So without further ado, oh, I know when I edit this, I'm going to regret not fully drying my hair, but please know my hair is not greasy. It's just wet or semi-wet. Um, but yeah, let's get into... The new releases that I'm excited about. Up first is a book called Oh Sister by Jodie Chapman. This was put on my radar by a wonderful author and Instagram friend Ali Miller because this is a novel that I think touches on um, religion which as you guys may know is something that I find super interesting. So this story follows three women. It says Isabel, Jen and Zelda, three women whose bodies and minds are not their own. They belong to the church. Life and death decisions are made by others on their behalf, who they might marry, whether they start a family. Isabel and Jen know nothing of the world, but when Isabel's husband leaves her and Jen challenges those in, in charge, the church turns its back on them. Zelda, never one for doing what is expected, dares to find hope on the outside. So we follow what it's like for these women to live in a prison of their mind and how they break out of it. I believe the religion this book is set on is the Jehovah's Witnesses, but I'm not 100% sure and I'm not sure if it's written in the tone that um, understands or implies the religion versus like putting it on the page. But anything that involves high demand groups and um, people escaping any sort of commitment like that is super up my street is described by pandora sykes as a debut about sibling grief religion and sliding doors of love i have this on my kobu ready to go and i think it's one that i could definitely binge across a weekend okay with fitz Corraldo, they have a new novel coming out called the long form by kate briggs um this sounds like it's gonna be really really beautiful because of the way that it talks and the form that it uses so it says that helen and her young baby rose are awake it's the first thing on a new morning they rest they communicate rose feeds thoughts and associations travel far beyond the remit of the front room in their rented flat which they pace and which a life with them continues to be new a delicate balance is interrupted by a delivery of a history of Tom Jones by Henry Fielding, a novel which describes itself semi-seriously as inventing the novel form for the very first time. So it sounds like it's going to be a book within a book, which I also find super interesting if it's well done. And I, as I always say, with Fitzcarraldo, we trust, even if it doesn't totally work for me, I always get something from reading their titles and I trust their curation of uh, editorial work they put out. So it says, as the morning progresses, Helen starts reading it indirectly and in each in their own distinct ways, Helen and Rose start thinking about what it claims to newness, its length, its essayistic digressions, its invitation to imagine old and new forms of life, writing and experience. The novel meditates on housing, caretaking, friendship and lays bare the settings and support structures that make durations durational forms of cohabitation first thinkable and then possible really like the idea of how they will intellectualize and discuss this young life within the baby and sort of the thoughts and feelings relating to those very early days of motherhood i think will be super interesting and it says it insists on the creativity inherent in everyday life showing how the acts of social composition are continuous with the acts of artistic composition um, looking at productive codependencies in the small details of an every day. Definitely, definitely want to pick that one up when I next do a Fitz order. A book that came out on the 6th with Penguin that I have seen a couple of people review and I'm really excited for. I'm such a sucker for Irish literature. I think it is such a beautiful um, community and produces some of my favourite stories are stories that come out of Ireland. So this is called Close to Home by Michael McGee and it's a story about modern and toxic masculinity so it says um sean's brother anthony is a hard man when they were kids his ma their ma did his best to keep him out of trouble but you can't say anything to anto sean was supposed to be different he was supposed to be he was supposed to leave and then never come back but sean does come back arriving home after uni and he finds that anthony's drinking is worse than ever meanwhile there are no jobs in belfast and sean's degree seems like it's not worth the paper it was written on no one will give him the time of day one night he loses control and assaults a stranger at a party and everything is tipped into chaos. 
this book looks at the aftermath of that night, the consideration of brotherhood and sort of the idea of being the sibling that was meant to be no trouble for your family and those complicated dynamics you have within growing up alongside other people when you are um, one of a few children. So it says this book draws heavily on the author's own experiences and it looks at how young working class men are always kept in harm's way. With humanity on every page is a piece of fiction that decides what kind of man you want to be and how you find your place in a very scarred city. So yeah, excited for its take on modern Belfast and its consideration of, like I said, masculinity in the economic context of a failing city. So definitely, definitely one I'm keen to read that I've seen a couple of people really love. Another one that I um, wish I bought for my holiday because I think I would have binged it. Um, and again, I've seen people review, this is called Scorched Grace. This, as you can tell by the cover, again, is going on my religious interests. And it's a story of a religious boarding school, I believe. And it says St. Sebastian's School becomes the target of a shocking arson spree. So the sisters of the sub sublime blood and their surrounding community are thrust into chaos. They're unsatisfied with the official's response. Sardonic and headstrong Sister Holiday becomes determined to unveil the mystery attacker herself and return home and return her home and sanctuary to its former peace her investigation leads her down a twisted path of suspicion in a, in the oppressive new orleans heat turning against her colleagues students and even her fellow sisters along the way sister holiday is more faith is more faithful than most but she's no saint she's no saint this is a story of a high stakes mystery and reckoning with the sins of her past sounds like it's going to be really fun and i believe this is going to be the first in a series perhaps in a trio and that sounds also a trilogy even that also sounds appealing to me because i like a whodunit where we are predicting what will happen next and we're left a bit on a cliffhanger i also know my mum's gonna love this she grew up going to a convent school and has so many stories about the nuns that taught her and i think this would be really um yeah something that she would enjoy and sort of remember more more times of her own um, adolescence and childhood so I saw this in the bookshop in Amsterdam and I can't promise that I won't pick it up the next time I'm in town. So that's Scorched Grace. The next one is The Middle Daughter. I love, love, love the cover of this one. I believe it's a modern retelling of Hades and Persephone. I am not a Greek retelling kind of gal. I actually really despise that genre of books that has become so trendy, but this sounds like you could read it without associating anything to do with a retelling it's not set in any sort of time period of then so this says ododo's death was the beginning of a raging storm but at that moment we thought the worst had already happened and life would treat us with more kindness but when nanny is only 17 she loses her sister and her father misunderstood by the rest of her family she is beguiled by a iterant preacher a handsome self-proclaimed man of god who seems to offer her all the answers but instead of building a, a future with him she's soon forced into challenging womanhood with an oppressive husband I read a lot of books about oppressive marriages and struggles in religious settings recently um so yeah this sounds like it's gonna be really good but horribly sad as well because lots of people are in the reviews talking about the grief and the portrait of the family grief and understanding loss and Oh, well, I, one of my anxiety triggers at the moment is my family dying and I feel like this will not help that issue. So it might be one I save for later. But again, gorgeous cover. There's a new book out by Max Porter. Really enjoyed the Max Porter that I've read um, in the past, his earlier work, but I haven't read the most recent publication before this, which was about Francis Bacon. But he is, if you don't know, a very playful um, novelist who produces short um sort of inconsistent pieces of writing that flow through the page. He plays with text and typesetting and um, his storytelling is quite whimsical and often deals in the magic and the written magical realism sort of topics to tell like fable like stories. But I really enjoy his work. And this is called Shy and it says it's a novel about God guilt, rage, imagination and boyhood. He also likes to write a lot about childhood in his stories, which I He's one of the only writers I enjoy that perspective from. So it says, this is the story of a strange few hours in the life of a troubled teenager. You mustn't do that to yourself. You mustn't hurt yourself like that shy. He's wandering into the night, listening to the voices in his head, his teachers, his parents, the people he has hurt and the people who are trying to love him. 
Got your special meds, nutcase. He's escaping, last chance, a home for very disturbed young men, and walking into the haunted space between his night terrors, his past, and the big question of his future. I actually hadn't read the blurb before this, and I had seen a poster and seen people sort of posting photos of it, but now I've read the blurb, this is definitely one I'm going to um, be keen to read, and I know Tom will really enjoy as well that, that subject of young masculinity, of mental illness, of understanding your adolescence, and the idea of these different voices definitely sounds like it's it's going to be beautiful and I trust Max Porter with those topics um definitely so yeah I'm keen for that one this is a um sort of internet novel that I have seen around but I haven't seen anyone review it I've just seen a couple of pictures on Granta's Instagram it's called Chrysalis by Anna Metcalf and this says she is watched by Elliot as he trains in the gym he notices her dedication to building her body and taking up space and he's drawn to her strength. She is observed by her mother as she grows from a tremulous child into a determined and distant woman who severs all family ties. She is observed by a former colleague who offers her sanctuary and support when she leaves her family and job, rebuilds her life, transforms her body and reinvents herself online. Each of these three witnesses to the woman's desire each of each are left with only a husk of who she was before before she became someone else a woman on a singular and solitary path to power to influence her followers for good and ill it says it's described as an oblique novel with beguiling prose about solitude and selfhood and the line between self-care and narcissism that sounds super super interesting and by the look of the cover and the fact this is published by granta which is me passing judgment on a book before i've read it it seems like it's going to be with a lighter touch it doesn't seem like it's going to be a super commercial internet novel and those ones where they talk about instagram in quite a um frustrating and flattening way i really hate um there was a book was it by dawn porter that i read a few years ago that like put me off reading those kinds of internet novels that are sort of produced for women by women to read in a very yeah flattened and unnuanced way and this is blurbed by Avina Doshi who said it's a painful funny novel cruel and summed up perfectly by an ending with a flawless final sentence so that all really appeals to me and it says it's a masterclass in character so I feel like this could get really dark and I would want it to really push that line to, for me to find it interesting and I hope it does this is an interesting piece of translated work that came out on the 4th by on the 4th of April by 4th estate and I saw it's already the audio is already on script and it's quite short I'm gonna butcher the German title this is the short end of the son Nenali, Sonnenali, um, by Thomas Brustvig. But the reason why this appealed to me is because it's translated by Jonathan Franzen and it has a foreword by Jonathan Franzen as well, which I think sounds really interesting. And it's a classic German satire translated for the first time. It's comedic moving in an account of East Berlin and the fall of the Berlin Wall. I love to deep dive into random historical topics. I went through a phase last month, if you will see it in a wrap up in my April video, of reading a lot of books about China and I have a couple of books on my shelf about Berlin and after visiting there recently I was like oh that's going to be my next sort of dipping my toe in a topic and this sounds like it might be a book for that as well so this says um this is a satire literally set on the Son Sonnenallee, the famed Boulevard of the Sun in East Berlin. On this boulevard lives Michael, an adolescent who faced daily ridicule whenever he steps out his apartment building and comes into view of the observation platform on the west side. Look, a real zoni, can we take your picture? Hopelessly in love with the most beautiful girl on the street, Michael is battered away in favour of the western boys who are free to cross the border. What chance does Michael have and how much does he get into trouble for pursuing her? Laugh out loud funny and unabashedly silly, this novel follows the bizarre and grotesque quotidian details of life in the German Democratic Republic and the idea that its heart, freedom, democracy and life's fundamental hilarity hold relevance then and for today. I'm really into reading older books at the moment as well, like um, have another German translated book for the similar topic that um, might pair well with that and as I said I saw this was available already on script. Okay, a piece of Dutch translation I'm going to say I believe yeah this is called Breakwater and I'm not going to attempt the Dutch name because I will embarrass myself with my absolutely appalling Dutch even as a person who's lived here for nearly two years um, but this is a novel about a marriage torn apart by a violent secret for fans of Lauren Groff's Fate and Furies which I haven't read but so many of my friends adore um, and this says Amelia has it all a rewarding career as a statistician statistician 
statistician, I cannot say that word, someone who works with statistics, a wonderful husband, healthy young sons in a house in the countryside, but in a brief moment of panic triggers a memory of a traumatic experience of 12 years before. Amelia finds herself floating away from her average existence. This secret she has kept for so long stays hard to hide and she, her grip on reality loosens. Heavy rain begins to fall and threatens to overflow the house. In this critically acclaimed novel, um, she explores sexual violence, whether it's possible to truly know another person, a haunting examination of memory and trauma. I know the author is quite a renowned playwright in um, the Netherlands and a lot of her work is put on regularly here in Amsterdam and across the country. And she is really, um, yeah, sort of uh, lauded here. So I'm interested to read that and obviously living here. I want to read more Dutch work, but a lot of it doesn't really appeal to me, but this one sounds like it does. And I looked up the author's backlist and it has a couple of titles that I also think would be really interesting. And I want to know if um, this is being put on as a play in English. I know she does put some of her work on in English because I really miss going to the theatre here and it's hard to find smaller works that are in English and my Dutch probably will never be good enough to watch a play in um dutch so yeah that's definitely one if you are dutch and you know anything about her please do sound out in the comments okay back on my cult bullshit this is a typical sort of big biography of a cult leader that i perhaps will pick up later down the line on audio i did recently re-watch the three-part series on um this tragedy so i don't really feel like i want to read this right now but perhaps you do and perhaps i will later so this is published by Head of Zeus, came out on the 6th, and it's called Koresh, the true story of David Koresh, the FBI and the tragedy at Waco. Um, if you don't know the story of that, it's about a the Branch Davidians, who were like an offshoot of a Christian group, and all of the retellings of their group always start at Waco, which was actually the end of the cult. It was like a standoff between them and the FBI, and 86 people died within the um group and this says that the assault on the by federal agents of the branch davidian compound in which 86 people died had become a founding myth the extreme right-wing conservatism invoked by military men gun rights advocates and the alt-right the leader of the evangelical sect in waco an extreme form of seven-day eventism was vernon howe also known as david koresh um this is an extraordinary and meticulous narration of the event in all its squalor strangeness and delirium it doesn't downplay the madness of this cult but is sympathetic and humane towards the followers and critical of the fbi who spoiled of what who were spoiling for a violent showdown and explained why this siege becomes so important to those who loathe the state so that analysis section of it does sound super interesting to me and it does frustrate me in a lot of the documentaries and products of this particular well-known cult story don't often touch on that so i think that will be something i will find interesting but it does have a lot of story before you get there and that story i like i say i know quite well so not sure if i'll pick this one up soon but definitely is on my list of like cult books to read at some point um okay back to novels this one is out with europa editions really gorgeous cover this is called alone by carl Kai Ooh, jesus what's wrong with me today carl lotta gert um and this i believe is translated from the spanish so this says may is 42 a 42 year old editor living in barcelona after unsuccessfully trying to become pregnant for years and having grown apart from her husband she wants to describe she wants to escape her crude reality by when she's made redundant from her job at a publishing house. She moves into the cottage where she grew up in the fo forest of Catalonia and she believes this is the perfect opportunity to finish that novel she's been obsessing over. As she begins to write or tries, a tragedy hits her and solitude possesses her, forcing her to face her past. She has chance encounters and new relationships with figures from her childhood to keep her grounded. The forest and its inhabitants take over as she fights to finish this novel and escape solitude unscathed. Really like the sound of this setting. It's reminding me a bit of Is Mother Dead, which was a book I loved um, earlier this year and had a part of the story was set in a um, forest sort of countryside part outside of um, also in Norway and I like the idea of these it's very European to me as well I know it's common in the Netherlands as well so like escape to these second homes it's like less of a it's, it's still very middle class but it's less of an exclusive thing lots of these homes in the countryside are passed down through families and yeah I think it's super interesting to read about the rural areas of different countries after growing up in the UK which has like a very specific 
version of rurality so yeah this one sounds like it might be beautiful and the hint that says like the forest and its inhabitants and the cover is maybe suggesting to me there might be a touch of the surrealism in there with the animals and the forest so I could get on board with that one that I know is quite well hyped and also quite divisive. I got a message from my group chat with my friends the other day. Someone said it was fucking boring while the other one really loved it. I won't name names here, but they will be watching. And this is The Biography of Act X by Kathleen Lacey. I've never read any Kathleen Lacey, Lacey partly because some of my friends hate her and some of my friends love her. But this one I had on Good Word that is quite funny and wry in its take on the literary world and does a lot of sort of name dropping and suggestion in a similar way to Mona a few last year that I read, which I loved. And I like a takedown of the industry in a very macabre way while participating in the industry and quite ironic. So this says when X, an iconastic artist, writer and polarising shapeshifter dies suddenly, her widow, wild with grief, hurls herself into writing a biography through though x was recognized as a crucial creative force for her era she kept a tight grip on her life story not even cm her wife knew where x had been born or, and on her quest to find out she opens the pandora's box of secrets betrayals and destruction Lo lots of secrets love a book about secrets unless i'm disappointed in the secret which is what happened to me in a book i read recently but interesting as well not using the names of these people and having x and these letters so it says that her through her collaborators infused with everyone from david bowie to tom waits to susan sontag and finally when she understands the scope of x's defining artistic project cm realizes her wife's deceptions were far crueler than she could ever imagine sounds like it's going to be more suspenseful than i imagined i thought this was going to be quite like uh focusing on the interior and questioning but it sounds like it has a lot of suspense and maybe thriller-ish literary elements to it so let me know if you have read this one um i do have a proof of it so i probably will get to it soon same goes with having a proof for the new hang kang which i've tried to read twice but like only the first few pages and i will let myself off because both times i picked it up i have been quite unwell but i definitely do want to read this because i do enjoy hang kang's work this is greek lessons which has my favorite color on the cover which i love and it looks quite short in a classroom in seoul a young woman watches her greek language teacher at the blackboard she tries to speak but she's lost her voice her teacher finds himself drawn to the silent woman day by day he is losing his sight oh interesting sensual sensory conversation going on there that sounds cool soon they discover a deeper pain binds them for her in the space of a few months she's lost both her mother and the custody battle for her nine-year-old son for him it's the pain of growing up between korea and germany torn between two cultures and languages this is a tender love letter to human connection and a novel that awakens senses conjuring the essence of what it means to be alive it sounds like it might be quite affirming which is always good in this climate um and it says it's translated by deborah smith as always from the korean and yeah i'm not sure where the greek comes into it. i remember reading the first chapter and thinking like oh this is too cerebral for me right now but it's definitely one i want to come back to and i didn't realize it had that sort of more plot focus center about these two people meeting um before i picked it up so yeah definitely one i think will be worth my time one I've already read that I want to just re-promote, I put in a wrap-up video, I read it at the very end of last year, is Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. This is a crime thriller, psychological, interesting literary story about two booksellers who are in a long-term feud working at a what is basically a version of Waterstones in London, in Walthamstow, and are debating through their life experience and um, interest the ethics of true crime and I loved the way that Slater put true crime in this uh, front and centre of this story without making it moralistic or um, ethically black and white um, I thought this was really funny and tense at points and then the like secondary understanding of the ethics of true crime being woven through made it super super interesting and rewarding to read I found so definitely one I um, would put out there if you're looking for like a weekend bingeable read a holiday read it's definitely one that you will um, go through quickly because it also has alternative points of view like um, switching between each chapter this is another sort of thrilling um, book that I am interested in because I won't lie, I was drawn in because the author worked on or produced the original books that made the TV series Killing Eve, which I loved up until the like third season and I never watched the most recent one because I think it got really bad really fast. So 
I guess I'm not like super invested in this being good, but it's, I don't know how far the TV series went to follow the book, so that makes sense. But this is called Panic by Luke Jennings, and it says there are three best friends and super fans of a TV hit show called The City of Night. They fantasize about the show in their chat room and they find escape from their, their troubled small town lives. But everything changes when they discover that the, the TV star Alice Temple is in danger. The four resolve to meet for the first time in real life, but save her. Things go wildly awry and they are on the run across, America, across the American South with their heroine, their fans discover the Hollywood stardom has a dark side and it comes at a lethal, lethally high price. Can they keep running for long enough to uncover the truth about Alice and discover themselves in the process? But yeah, I'm really interested in reading about fandom and I have read a few flop books about fandom um, in recent times. So this sounds like it could be interesting. And yeah, the idea of like people being obsessed with a TV show sounds like it might be a bit like Big Brother or something reality based. Yeah, could be, could be interesting. A book I'm super excited for, which I don't know how I'm going to get my hands on because it's indie published in the US by Arsenal Pulp Press and it came out on the 4th and it's a new book by Casey Plett. My lovely friend Sage introduced me to Casey Plett's work. I read, oh goodness, now I can't remember, something about a fish, small fish, little fish. And I loved it so, so, so much. I listened to it on audio and it was such a beautiful story and little fish it was called. And this is a set of short stories that they've produced called A Safe Girl to Love. Um, and it says that it was originally published in 2014, but it's now back in print after a long absence. This new edition it considers an afterword by the author. I feel like um, Casey Platt is like getting their flowers after a while of being um, sort of obsolete and not um, readily re recognised, but... Um, they recently won the Lambda Literary Award for Transgender Fiction and it says that this follows a young trans woman stumbling through loss, sex, harassment and love in a settings ranging from a rural Mennonite town. Oh my god, big tick for that. Um, yeah, I believe Casey Platt is Canadian actually, so I think this is published by a Canadian press, I'm gonna say, maybe I got that wrong, sorry. To a hipster bar in Brooklyn, these stories are shiny with whiskey and prairie sunsets, rattling subways and neglected cats, showing that growing up as a trans girl can be charming, funny, frustrating and sad, but never predictable. Yeah, I love her writing. I love the way she talks about gender and body and ownership and autonomy and with such a light touch and levity and joy and humor along with it, I think. Um, yeah it's so 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 beautiful so i really need to find a way to get a copy of this i need to talk to my american friends <laughs> a non-fiction book that i'm super excited for but i likely will probably get an audio this isn't something i would read um in print but this is called mom in mom Influence, which is not does not have a good ring to it if you ask me inside the maddening picture perfect world of mommy influencer culture by sarah peterson this is an american understanding of um social media and Instagram influencers. So I think it potentially won't be 100% for me. And it says, it looks at the private work of mothering turned into public performance through Instagram, generating billions of dollars. The message is simple. We are just a few clicks away from beautiful, more better experience of motherhood. Linen clad influencers, hawking essential oils, parenting manuals, baby slings, and sponsored content for away suitcases make us forget the reality of uh, mothering in America is isolating, exhausting, and almost wholly unsupported as an endeavor. So it says it is at home with Gia Tolentino's work and argues that mum influencers don't just simply sell mothers on the benefits of bamboo di diapers, but they sell the dream of motherhood itself, a dream tangled up in whiteness, capitalism, and the heteronormative nuclear family that final sentence gives me hope this is going to be nuanced and understanding in its consideration of social media and what it brings for people and what it takes away from people um and an interesting thesis about what um is behind influencing through this like family lens that we use uh but yeah i think i'll probably pick that up on audio another one that i think i'm looking forward to on audio is called the black girl from pyongyang by monica Mascus, this says, this is the true story of a West African girl's upbringing in North Korea under the protection of the president Kim Il-sung. In 1979, age seven, Monica was transplanted from West Africa to unfamiliar surroundings of North Korea. She was sent by her father, who was the first president of the post-independence Equatorial Guinea, to be educated under the guardianship of his ally and friend Kim Il-sung. Wow. 
so many questions that I must have answered when I read this book. It says, within months, her father was executed in a military queue and her mother became unreachable. Effectively orphans, she and two siblings had to make their life in Pyongyang. At a military boarding school, they mixed with older children, spoke fluent Korean and handled weapons on training exercises. After university, she went searching for her roots. I'm interested how she even got out of North Korea. I know that is a big question mark. Um, she passed through Beijing, Seoul, Madrid, Guinea, New York, and finally London, forced at every step to reckon with the damning perceptions of her adoptive homeland. Optimistic and unflinching, Monica's astonishing and unique story asks, challenges the way we see the world. Wow, I'm like so, so sold on this, like desperately waiting for my Audible credit so I can purchase this. I hope it's out on audio because this just sounds fan fantastic like I have so many questions I need answers to okay coming up towards the end uh, there's a new book out from Katrina Ward I loved her previous book Sundial I did attempt to read her debut while I was on holiday and I hated it but this sounds like it's gonna have no talking cats so I'm excited it's called Looking Glass Sound and if you don't know Katrina Ward writes literary psychological thrillers that are particularly dark and often focus on animal cruelty so if that's not for you I will give you a pass I don't know if this one particularly has animals in it but she does tend to write in the very dark depths of the human mind when it comes to abuse and children and animals and stuff like that so some people I think would consider her even writing horror I guess it's like literary thriller with some deep dark stuff rolled in but this says it's a mind-bending tale of friendship and betrayal and the impossibility of escaping your own story in a cottage overlooking a windswept main coast love the idea of that setting Wilder Harlow begins the last book he will ever write the story of a sun-drenched summer of his youth and the killer who stalked the small England new small New England town of a terrible tragedy that forever bonded him with his friends Nate and Harper in unknowing ways the horror that followed them over all those years Wilder has returned to the town decades later in an attempt to recount that summer's events in his memoirs but as he write he begins to fear his grip on the truth is fading and the events in the manuscript chime eerily with the present he's even starting to see a dark-haired woman down in the city down in the icy waters below the cottage but it seems no one else can Ooh, spooky yeah it sounds like it might be quite scary <laughs> if i'm honest because i'm not good with things like that with like seeing people and being haunted that vibe not for me but probably will pick this up tom will definitely he's read he loved both of katrina Ward's previous books so i know that he will be a also buy for him when he's next at the bookshop so intrigued to see his take on that and ask my other Katrina Ward Stan friends um what they thought of it because like I say I'm one out of two for enjoying her work so far I think that is all actually that was the penultimate book or the last book I had to share I thought it was the penultimate so that is everything that caught my eye in April let me know if you've read any of these if any of them you're planning to pick up and I would love to hear from you and I will see you in the next one bye